Falcons the other night and uh, came away with a 30-17 to victory. And Davis Webb looked very much like the heir apparent as opposed to the first game uh, that he played uh, in, in the exhibition season against the Browns where he looked like uh, – he looked like Air Bud. <laughs> so, um, you know, 14 for 20, 140 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he played the entire first half. Uh, you, know, you, you can't, you can't, you can't really find much fault in in anything that Davis Webb did in the second half, in the second his second game. Um, and he he's going to be a big a big player for the Giants because obviously with the draft that they had, they took Saquon Barkley. Uh, running back with this number two overall pick, um, a lot of people wanted him to take a quarterback of the future and and to you know, have the team in in know whose hands that the, the, that the franchise would be in going forward. But the Giants looked at the, looked at the situation. They said Eli still has some years left in him. We have faith in him, and we have this guy that we took in the third round a couple of years ago who's never played and a, a real NFL snap. And we kind of like him, but let's find out a little bit more about him. Yeah. And that's Davis Webb. And, and you know, all we can do with him is wait and and, and see what happens. Like you said, uh, Eli Manning is the quarterback of the Giants. That's not going to change unless he gets hurt. That's right. And he doesn't get hurt. And, and No, he doesn't. And, and you know what? You know, this year I think it's going to be a better season for Eli Manning. I think uh, – He's got, he's got weapons now. Yeah, that's the thing. He has someone to throw to. And, uh, and, he's, got, and he's got an offensive line, too. Yeah, that's very important. <laughs> so, I mean, the Giants' offense has been retooled. Uh, no, hardly, hardly anybody played against uh, against the Lions. Eli didn't play at all. Odell Beckham Jr. didn't play. Saquon Barkley didn't play. And the Giants still scored 30 points. So, it's encouraging. That but, is, again, you can't tell too much out of You can't tell out of—I out of, just... know, but you know what? Think about— Last season, when they couldn't score, couldn't score at all, at all, and so how many? How often does, do the Giants score thirty points? It almost never happens. Not, it did not last year. Barely happened last year. It hasn't happened in a couple of years. Yeah, so it's it's not been something you expect from the Giants to score thirty yeah. points. But o- Odell Beckham, pretty soon, needs to be tested in game situation. Uh, he he hasn't played either either of the two exhibition games. Um, I understand why they're being cautious, but at the same time, you need to see what he can do. Uh, Saquon Barkley tweaked the hamstring uh, last week, so I, I didn't expect him to play against the Lions. Um, and, and they want to look at other quarterbacks. They have uh, Kyle Loletta, who they drafted in the third round this season, uh, and they're, they're going to give him some snaps. Uh, they want to give Davis Webb a lot of snaps because, like I said, they want to see what the kid can do and, and really look at their situation and say, all right, well, a, can this kid be a backup quarterback? And and obviously they feel he can. But B, is he is he capable of leading this team? Because again, if Eli gets hurt, Davis Webb becomes your starter. And in probably two years or something, Eli is going to say, "All right, you know what? I'm pretty much done here." Then either either you're going to have to find a quarterback in in the next two years, or Davis Webb is your guy, and he's just the guy in waiting. So, I I agree. Um... I often wonder, you know, will Eli, Eli? What happened to Peyton? Happened to Eli? You know, you get you get that, you know, that last team, which isn't the team you basically started out with. Well, Peyton had had neck surgery. No, he, he was I mean, hurt. He had, he, had, he had a really big injury, and the Broncos needed to figure out. All right, are we moving on? Or I'm sorry, the the Colts needed Colts, to. Yeah. And the Colts had Andrew Luck right there waiting for him, so it was kind of a situation where. For the Colts, it made sense to, to to get away from Peyton and not not have to rely on him after after the major neck surgery that he had. With the Giants, I don't know that they're going to be in a position like they were in in this past off season where they had the number two pick. I, I don't envision that happening again. But would they be able to get a quarterback at say number fifteen to number twenty? Which is kind of where I expect I expect the Giants to be over five hundred this year. I mean, to to say that they're going to be under five hundred, and and especially they won't be three and thirteen like they were last season. But I expect them to be a much better team this this season, only because they had so many injuries last season. The the the, the wide receiver core was decimated by injuries, uh, and and again the offensive line don't you know 
don't think an improved offensive line won't improve your entire offense. Of course. Because it does. And, and you know, the, the signings that the Giants made, the drafts, that the, the, the draft picks that the Giants got, everything has, has been upgraded offensively. So I, I, I would never say that the Giants will be an offensive force because it doesn't seem to be how this franchise plays football. But it sure would be nice to see him scoring, or say, 23, 27, 30 points on a consistent basis. That would be that, – if they did that, just if, think of what they did that – if they did that last year, they would have won a few more They'll be tough games. to beat. If they can do that, they'll be, they'll be tough to beat. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's talk uh, quickly about uh, the NHL, what's going on over there. Uh, the Predators general manager, David – how do you say David that? David Poyle. Poyle. Um, he is going to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah, this was actually a story that that, that we missed last week. Okay, uh, because the NHL uh, announced, or actually, I guess the Hockey Hall of Fame announced the uh, the incoming class for uh, this season, uh, and that includes, like you said, David Poyle, who is uh, the current general manager of the National Predators, and also uh, was uh, spent 15 years with the Washington Capitals, which is how a lot of people got to know his name. Um, also included in the class include uh, former University of Michigan coach Red Berenson, who also had a, a nice NHL career with mostly with the St. Louis Blues. Um, I actually know Red Berenson, by the way. Didn't you cover him? Wasn't, he, he was wasn't... he was part of he was one of the coaches on my uh, Troy Record Top Ten College Hockey Top Ten. The first the, top ten, really? Of well, the, the, more like the definitive poll, because okay. there there because there were actually polls that go way back okay. uh, and I'm trying to remember who, 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 there was one guy who actually went on to work for CBS who did a college hockey poll back when he was I think working in Maine or someplace like that and I didn't even really know that at the time I, I, I actually got some education when I went on a radio show I think it was in Minnesota and yeah, unabashedly declared my poll the best the best in the country of course, and, and and they were like, "Well, what about this one?" And I'm like, "I, I don't know anything about it. you know. Like, what, what do I care? I, I I have more voters than anybody else, so yeah, mine is the best. Of course. So and and I don't think I don't think that was going out on a limb, but they I was uh, maybe Gary Stockton, I don't know somebody like that, but um, there were I think four other polls at the time, but I think the most voters that any of them had was like twelve. And mine had twenty four. Twelve isn't a lot. No, I had I had coaches from every conference. I had sports writers. I had I had a lot of people on that. So, but anyway, Red Berenson was one of the one of the voters on the Troy Record College Hockey Top Ten. So good for him. And Michigan was outstanding when he was there as a coach. Um, Three time Olympic medalist Natalie Darwitz, uh, female hockey player, obviously uh, retired NHL referee Paul Stewart, who, as far as I'm concerned, was one of the best referees probably in NHL history. He was outstanding. Uh, the late Leland Hago Harrington, might be Hago, uh, and that is the class they will be inducted on December 12th at a ceremony in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So that's Preds country. Preds country, yeah, the Predators, as they yes. call And uh, finally, brother, the thing we really did this extra bit for uh, is we have this huge soccer. A lot of soccer. A lot of going stock, on this, soccer this going on. So let's uh, get to it. Uh, your team, Chelsea, defeated Arsenal. Who? What? Uh, not I'm my sorry. team. That's not right. my team, Chelsea. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. That's uh, Doug Watson's team, Chelsea. Uh, but, yeah, the the big match of the weekend was was Chelsea and Arsenal. Uh, and Chelsea wound up uh, getting a late goal uh, to beat Arsenal, That uh, handing the Gooners their second loss in two games. Is Gooners said with uh, respect? No. Okay, just check. Derision. Just check. Uh, the, the Gooners have a new coach. Whose name I, I can't even pronounce. Some some Umit Emery or something like that. Okay. Who has now lost his first two games as the Arsenal manager? I'm surprised he's still Which, around. Yeah, Piers Morgan has already started the Twitter Emery out. <laughs> uh, their fans, their their fans are, are literally babies. I I just it's so annoying and so aggravating how entitled these people are and, and how they feel like oh well we we won 20 years ago so we should always win. It doesn't work that way. You got to earn it, and they just want it. They just want it to stay the way it's the way it's always been. Oh well, we were so good. We have trophies, but uh, yeah, twenty years ago, enough already. So, anyway, I, I I was I was I'm pleased about that, that that Arsenal has started off with two losses. I actually would have preferred a draw in this match because I I, I don't I don't like Chelsea getting the three points, but 
it is what it is. Um, the the probably the most surprising result in the Premier League over the weekend was Little Brighton, Brighton and Hove Albion defeating mighty Manchester United at Old Trafford. Unbelievable, three to two. Brighton had three goals in the first half, which was incredible and just really showcased how poor Manchester United's defense is. Um, there were rumors all during the, the summer transfer window that uh, Manchester United wanted uh, Ta- Tottenham's uh, central mid- uh, central uh, defender, Toby Alderweireld, his name is. I call him Al- Alder Dude because it's easier to pronounce. Uh, and they also apparently were making overtures uh, towards Danny Rose, another Tottenham defender. And now we see why. It's because Manchester United's defense is terrible. It's god-awful. Give up three goals in the first half to Brighton? Come on, this is this team's going nowhere. I am te- I am predicting right now. I will predict this on the bonus portion of from the press box to the podcast people only. Jose Mourinho, by the time the season is over, will no longer be the manager at Manchester United. That is my promise. That is a big uh, big prediction, brother. He's, 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 his his history says three years. Is this is his third year? He he's he's not going to make it because. He's, he's going to start popping off at some point that despite all of the hundreds of millions of dollars that this club has spent on players, he should say, well, you didn't get me this guy. You didn't get me this guy. You didn't spend on, on when I told you I needed defenders. You didn't spend. Right. And he, he's another one. He's like the Arsenal fans, baby, <laughs> where Tim, he, is, he's is been, ev- every other team but Tottenham but, but, babies. <laughs> when you spend when you spend three hundred million pounds in in the summer window and it's still not enough, they spent ninety something million pounds on Paul Pogba. How do you spend who, that much money? Who 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 showed at the World Cup? He's he's one of the best players in the world, except when he plays for Jose Mourinho, who turns him into this middling nobody who can't have an impact on the game. I I, I don't understand how you make Paul Pogba a bad player. But but somehow Jose Mourinho does it, and of course it's never his fault. So he'll he'll be done by the time the season's over. Uh, Zinedine Zidane. Well, let's let's mark this August twentieth, two thousand eighteen. Yes, mark this down. Your birthday. And write it. You should write it down so when we can go back to the show, and you know do that. I'll write it down. Okay. But Zinedine Zidane, who led Real Madrid to the Champions League title last season, is. Sitting out there without a job. Wouldn't he make a great replacement for Jose Mourinho? He wins, he wins the Champions League, Zidane, and then he re- resigns. Why? Because, because he was having problems with some of the players, and the thinking was that had Real Madrid not won the Champions League, because they, they wound up finishing something like fourth in their league, which Real Madrid is usually one of the top two teams, where if they're not winning the league title, then they're finishing second. But they had they had a, a, a pretty poor season this year in their league, so the thinking was that he was going to be fired, or sacked, as they say, sacked. But then they win the Champions League, and it's like, how do you fire somebody after they win the Champions League? That's it's idiocy. So, well, look what happened I, with Joe Girardi. Well, I think I think they just talked him into saying, all right, you know what, I'm just going to resign and and I'll be done with it, and you know, give the old, well, it's a lot of pressure and I want to spend time with my family and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think he's already spent enough time with his family. And, and if Manchester United comes calling and says, of course, they'll more than likely be the obligatory uh, Manchester United going after Mauricio Pochettino, the Tottenham manager. They'll, they'll, that will be the obligatory rumor. Don't believe it. Um, but that'll pop up. And then then Zidane will get the job. Probably, probably if I had a guess, I'm going to say late February. That'll, that'll be around the time it happens. And uh, what's going on with uh, my boy Harry Kane? Your boy Harry Kane, brother. You mean he, that Harry Kane guy? He he finally scored in August. What? So it, now it, we can say he, with, he with doesn't score in August with great certainty it's and, in his and contract. Great fact that Harry Kane scores when he wants to. What what what's wrong with that? August? In fifteen August matches prior to Saturday. Okay. Harry, Harry Kane had never scored. I mean, think about it. There's not that many. There's not that many games played in August. It's okay. early in the season, so usually it's the first maybe two or three matches of the season are played in August. And Harry Kane had never scored. 
Now, this is a guy who has scored more goals. 